Hi, everyone, and welcome to Hanratty's Huddle. Nice to have you with us. I'm Rob Adams. Terry Hanratty across the way. Dave Taromio away on assignment. Isn't that it, the best way it, to put it? And that's with pay, too. Oh, he gets paid for this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good gig. All right. boy, Dave. Go, go make the money. Um, Terry, I, I think the first thing for me is the Steelers. I have to go there. I mean, do we have to talk about it, though? Should we ignore it? No, I think we definitely have to talk about it. <laughs> and, you know, there's a certain thing – Go back to our first Super Bowl. You know, defense carried that first Super Bowl. Yes, it did. But we were we scored also. Oh yeah. I mean, the, the defense got us the ball in a good field position. Franco ran for which a, is a, what you're supposed to do, right? Franco ran for a record in that Super Bowl at the time. So yeah, you guys moved the ball. We moved the ball and we scored a lot and we took pressure off the defense. Right. But the defense was the big catalyst, at right? That, at that point. But now, I mean, the defense is carrying them, and I don't think the defense is that good. I think they're good, but I don't think they're a team that can – people that can carry it for the whole season. They have to somehow come up with, please, give me 20 points. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, not, that's not asking much. And it, it, to me, it's not Justin Fields. He's played well. He's played very well. I think it's the play selection. I don't think they have enough home run hitters. I no, think, they don't. I think Pickens is very good. But then you can just roll up on him. You can double team him. You can cut him. You can do a lot of things to, to knock out one receiver. And, so, and to me, the offensive line is not creating enough for Najee Harris to run the ball. Even if you want to run more, it's it's not there. I've said for the last what three years that that kid is so beat up, his career is going to get shortened because they never give him. Every time he hits the line, he's hitting people. Yeah. Normally, you get that one or two yard gap. Where now I can go and make my move and lower a shoulder yeah. and, and try to make a move on people. But, you know, Najee is as soon as he gets there and the only yardage he gets is when he's carrying three or four people with him. Yeah. And um, that's, that's sad. That's sad because the kid's a great running back. And you've got a little bit of drama with Pickens this week. I don't like that kind of stuff. Just, you know, play ball, get the ball, well, that's, get the ball to him. Well, that's the thing about, you know, you took away the running game. It right. Used to, it used to be the, you know, you'd get the drama from the running backs or the quarterback. But now it's, you know, they've taken away the running game from the NFL. Most college oh sure, do. oh sure. And now the the receivers are the pretty boys and whatnot, and getting the commercials and getting you know, the drama for the team. <laughs> it's true. And so it, it sort of you know bangs back and forth. And uh, I think you go look around the league and you find that, that the receivers are the guys that are doing the most bitching. And I felt like Dak Prescott did everything in his power to give the game to the Steelers. Some pretty bad red zone turnovers, and the Steelers did nothing with it. No, and I thought the rain delay was going to help the Steelers. Did not. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think they, they slept NBC in their bed that night so. before. Yeah. And it was just—it's one of those things where they just—I mean, they were three and zero going into the game. But I thought, and I love my Steelers. Yes. And they just—they were the worst three and zero team I've seen. Yeah. You just can't score. 13 points and expect to win in the NFL. And now you got to go out and beat the beat the Raiders. Mentally, you have to beat the Raiders this no, week. No, this is a must win for yeah. the Steelers for this point. Because Baltimore started out really slow. Yes, they, they looked, did. They looked horrible the first couple games. Yep. Now, aha, uh-huh, they look good. Yeah. And I think I brought it up last week that, uh, you know, Pete Rozelle years ago said he wanted parity in the NFL. And you take away at this point right now the Kansas City Chiefs. Yep. And you have 31 teams that are even. Pretty much. And they're just... Uh, the Vikings, but I, I'm not buying on the Vikings. Not yet. Not I, yet. I don't believe them yet. Not yet. And I think Baltimore has a possibility of going up. The Steelers better start picking it up if they want to be, you know, they start out 3-0. Look like everybody in Pittsburgh going, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Yeah. Well, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, some really concerning signs with the Steelers that I think those of us who watch and listen week in, week out, we're not surprised we're here. No, I'm not. Not at all. Not at all. And the Devontae Adams stuff, make the trade or don't make the trade, but let's not do this again. Oh, there's more drama yeah, <laughs> with exactly. this trade stuff going back and forth. Receivers, drama? Who would think it? <laughs> oh. Uh, let's turn over. Uh, anything else in the NFL before I turn? The, well, I guess we got to do the Jets, right? Oh, the, well, the Jets, I think, are the number one story of the week. I think so. Dave, I mean, this is for you. <laughs> yeah, David, we, you know, we hate to do it to you, but I think you would be even worse off. Worse on them if you were here. But it's just, you gotta look at it. You know, what did the coach really do? He didn't do anything. You know, that's probably it. He didn't have the discipline, probably. Yes. And there's so many, you, you can't be jumping off sides, jumping off sides, jumping off sides. 
But it goes back to what I keep preaching, and I, and I, I know damn well I'm, I'm right on this. If you have a team and you don't play, you know, when I played, we had six preseason games. Everybody played at least a half, the mm-hmm. starters. Mm-hmm. Now, Rodgers didn't play a down. Right. And so he never got used to his receivers in a game situation. You can't get through this in practice because when your practice is going against your own defense, yeah. they know they're not going to get hit. Right. Then come across the middle and just casually catch the ball. But in a game, they know they're going to get their head knocked off. Exactly. And they also have to get, you know, the linemen. You know, when in practice, you know, you snap the ball and you put your hands up to the defensive lineman. There's no contact anymore in practice. So when they get in the game, of the guy crossing, okay, the, the blocking, do I go to the inside, do I go to the outside, and forget the count, boom, jump off sides. Mm-hmm. You have to get all this coordinated in the preseason to get into the regular season. And that's what I think so many teams now are, you know, look at the, look at the Kansas City Chiefs. They hit in preseason. They go away. Oh, sure they do. For their preseason. And they actually have a lot of contact. And they're the team on top. So it's just, you know, you, you just can't baby into things. You, you can't switch the light switch. No. You can't turn it off and on. No, you can't. And and did Rodgers in your mind have something to do with oh, the firing? There's no doubt in my yeah. mind. Yeah. There's no doubt in my mind. You, 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 know, talk to the, you talk to the owner if you're Rodgers on Monday, which I know he did because Rodgers surpassed, what was it, 60,000 yards? Yeah, 60,000 so yards. So you're talking to the owner who's calling to congratulate you. You're trying to tell me the, the coach never comes up during that conversation. There's no chance. No. No, no chance no of way. that. And the thing is, you know, I've said, said many times that, you know, when Rodgers was at his peak, and still now, he's one of the few quarterbacks I would pay to watch. Mm. I think he's that good. I think he's the first ballot. Oh, he, Hall automatic. Of Famer. I agree. He's crazy. He's a little goofy upstairs. Very. You know, good. any any guy who will go into a dark room for a day to figure out what he's going to do with his life, you got to sort of be a little little you, cautious there. You're a little different at that point. Yes, and we've seen it across the way. He's had trouble with his coaches. You know, Green Bay. You know, Mike McCarthy. Sure he did. You know, there's, you know, Mike McCarthy, not doing that well at Dallas now, but he's, you know, he's a, a he's very mixed successful result, coach. Yes, very I agree. successful. And, you know, the coming here that this was not the match. You could see that coming into that game. I mean, when they had the little, you know, tried to hug the him and push, push him away on the sideline, you go, everybody went, whoa, wait a minute here. So that wasn't the start of anything. There was a lot coming up to that point. Right. And I think this was just the, the tip of the iceberg. And the coach says something. Roger said, listen, we probably have, we have to make a change if we want to go forward. So Woody, he never coached, he never fired a coach during the season. No. It's the first time. And I don't think the coach deserved it, but that's football. I mean, that's sports. Yeah. I thought, look, I thought Salah would finish the year out, but not the case. I think there, it's such a, you know, an age limit that you can have that some go over the hill real quick players. So I think he realized that he has this window of opportunity where Rodgers is going to play this year, maybe next year. So I have to utilize him this year. So I've got to make a decision. And uh, there it was. Yeah, the the, the jet situation gets a, a, a little shakier. But look, winning winning can cure all that. Last time, did you hear this little stat about the last time the Jets fired a coach in season? Charlie Winter, 1975. Wow. In season, Charlie got the axe? In season. That's it. Oh, he's probably pissed off now because he's the only, he was the only guy to get fired in season. Now he's number two. Last time it happened. Yep. Wow. Wow. How about that? And how about the Steelers? You know, everybody says Steelers have had three coaches since 1969. That's correct. Can you imagine that? My lifetime, three coaches. Yes. Yeah. And here, these guys are, you know, like changing your socks, these owners. And they go out owing these coaches millions of dollars. It's incredible. And I'll stand by my belief that Chuck Knoll might be the most underappreciated, underrated coach in history. No doubt. Yeah. Never we coach, never coach of the him. year. Yeah. Never coach of the year. Yeah. And he had, uh, it was funny because, you know, when he first started with the Steelers, and he was, I was on his first draft. Right. You know, Joe Green was number one. I was number two. Yep. You know, so we started together. We were one and 13 together our, our rookie year. <laughs> and that back then, if the, you know, the Roonies hadn't known what they, the right, they did the right thing is just patience. Every other coach in the NFL would have fired the guy. Oh, sure. We went one and 13, right? right. But the, the Roonies knew what to do. And, uh, 
So the media, Chuck had this TV show, and you could see the whole time he's not a TV kind of guy. He's not a lovey dovey. He doesn't want to talk. He doesn't want to talk about his players to you. He'll talk about his players to the player. He wants to talk about his wine. Yeah, exactly. Really. And there's a one guy who got all the guys will come in that no one get a, get a sit down with Chuck as an interview. Chuck didn't want to do it. That's yeah. why he was never coach of the year because he didn't give out interviews. So these yeah. guys, it was all popularity contest. And Paul Zimmerman, mm -hmm. the great sports writer from New York, and he was also the wine connoisseur expert for the New York Times. Right. Yes. And Chuck was a sort of an infantile stage wine person who he talked even in our quarterback meetings. We, you know, sort of a couple minutes he'd spend on wine. How you should not pay more than $15 back then <laughs> for a bottle of wine because you can get this rose or whatever. You know, I don't know anything about wine. And Paul, being the expert, made a deal with Chuck. Listen, I'll give you an hour on wine if you give me an hour on your team. So they would have their back and forth. So Paul wrote all the great stories about the Steelers. There you go. And Chuck learned more than he could ever think about wine. Yeah, and became a very serious wine connoisseur later yeah, in his and, life. And he was, you know, he built to this day. I mean, the Steelers are sort of they're trying they're they're trying to be like the old Steelers, but they just haven't hit the spot yet. Right. And you got to realize, you know, there's only been three coaches. And Chuck won four Super Bowls, Cowher won Super Bowls, and Tomlin won Super Bowls. Yep. So there's been not only just three coaches, there's been success in those in those coaches. So I tell people, I said, you know, even college, I said, why don't you go to Pittsburgh? The Rooney's are wonderful people. They'd sit down and talk to you about how they hire a coach. And maybe you could pick up something rather than hire, fire, hire, fire, and try to do it all on your own. Because there's so many people that don't know anything about football that own franchises and they think they're the guru because they own the team. And they don't know a damn thing what they're talking about. Or personnel. Yeah. Or how to hire a coach. Yeah. What to look for. Incredible. The, the, when, I, we have yeah. the, when we have <laughs> one in New York. <laughs> yeah. That is, that the is one, for sure. We have the team in New York I love. Yeah. Although they're, uh, they're messy as well right now. Oh, yeah. But, they've, they've been, but, but I think they stuck That was with, a good win for the Giants. That's a great win. Yeah. Beating the Seahawks. And they're that's sticking a great with the, win. They're sticking with the quarterback too. Mm -hmm. I think the kid is great. I talked to uh, his coach uh, in college. I don't know. I can't think of his name. But... Give me a moment. I'll, oh. I will work on that. Oh, how can I? He's a dear friend that I can't think of his name. But there's another senior moment entering my, <laughs> my, my, my arena. Even coached at Notre Dame. Well, Manny Diaz is the coach down at Duke now, but that's, no. that's not who you're talking about. No, no. We'll, we'll think about it. But I talked to him, and I said, what do you think about Daniel? He says, the kid is really good. You, they have to stick with him. You know, he was very praised. Cutcliffe, David Cutcliffe. Wow. Oh, there we go. There we go. But uh, And he was the quarterback guru. He coached the Mannings, both of them. Yes, Pey that's right. That's Peyton right. and Eli. That's right. So he knows quarterbacks. Yeah. And he says that uh, – Daniel is just as good, and not just, I shouldn't say that, no. But he has the potential to be good in the NFL, put it that way. And it might not get to happen in New York, because we know the clock is running out. You figure this is his last year, but... And you have to know how to build a team around the yes. quarterback. Sam Darnold, great, I think, mean, great for the Jets. They should have... Great they talent, had him. but again, has not reached that spot, well, although better in... Well, with the Jets, they never built anything around him. Right. They never gave him an offensive line. There's never been a quarterback alive who's been successful with a bad offensive line. And and Jones didn't set the world on fire. Um, Had a good rookie uh, year. But no, I'm, uh, against Seattle, he was 23 of 34 for 257 and two touchdowns. Didn't turn the ball over, though. And learning the game. That's not a set the world on fire, but that's just a good, steady performance. Yep. And how many points did they score? What they win? 29-20. See? 29 points they put on the board. Yeah. Steelers are trying to get 13. So, and that's a building block game. It is. It, very much so. And I think Jones is, you know, he's, he's, I think he's going to be very good if they can surround him with the right people. And then, you know, we've said it, I've said it a hundred times. Football is the greatest team sport yeah. known to man. No one can be successful if the other guys aren't working well. Let's switch over to college football, Terry. Uh, spend a moment there. Give me, give me the greatest <laughs> breakdown of Notre Dame this week. They, Not much to talk about. <laughs> they, they beat, they beat by. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they desperately needed it because they are beat up. They yeah. have, and, they, but the bad part about it, they are beat up. 
to the point where these guys aren't going to play this year. You know, 60% of their it's offensive true. line that started the season are gone for the year with injuries. So, you know, the good thing you can get out about that, and they were young to begin with. Now they're even younger mm. that are their replacements. So they're all going to gain a lot of experience, so it's going to bode well for next year and the year after. So, you know, I think that'll be good for them, but they got to get through some, you know, some, some, they're always tough games. Always tough. Everybody loves to beat Notre Dame and, you know, Northern Illinois. And I, <laughs> I tried to, I tried to build them up, you know, to make that loss not so good, but then they've, they haven't won a game since they beat Notre Dame. So Buffalo beat them. Connecticut beat Buffalo, which means Connecticut's better than Notre Dame. <laughs> <laughs> Connecticut will be the national champion. There you go. Um, how about Alabama? Spend oh, a moment there. I mean, I, the, the, one of the great things was the, the pregame show with Nick Saban. Yeah. When he was talking about, talking about Vanderbilt. And he said, if there's one place you want to go in the SEC <laughs> where you're going to feel like the home team and you're going to get not a problem whatsoever, that's Vanderbilt. And a couple hours later. How'd that work out? <laughs> Vanderbilt kicked their ass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they kind of did. They really did. Yeah. And then Malachi, you know, the two things that really upset me in that loss. You know, I was happy for Vandy. Sure. But Clark Lee is a former Notre Dame coach. He was at, or defensive coordinator under, uh, Brian Kelly. Yeah. At Notre Dame. Yeah. And, uh, you know, n- when you go into the victory formation, and out there people know when there's 20 seconds to go on the clock and quarterback's grabbing the ball and taking a knee. And usually the offense and defensive line just sort of stand up and touch each other. Yes. No contact whatsoever. Right. Alabama fired out on Vandy and knocked two guys on their butt. I'm going, what's this all about? Then the the uh, official places the ball. Yes. And Malachi Moore, who's going to be a number one draft choice next year. Oh, yeah, year. He's a good player. Yeah. He comes up and he just kicks the ball away from the official. The official throws the flag up in the air. Which, and he's yelling yeah. and screaming. You know, I want to say, hey, pal, I want to grab him, pull him aside. Where is that energy during the game? That's a great point. Why are you yelling and screaming and jumping bar, around now? you got to pull him aside. You're a much better football team than Vanderbilt on every day except for today. Because mm-hmm. you didn't play, pal. Yeah. You better get in the locker room and start thinking about what you're going to do next week. And, you know, that just, that drove me crazy. But in his defense, I saw, and he came out and apologized. And I saw the apology, and he looked like he was sincere. So we'll cut him a break because I think that's the first time he's gone off, gone crazy. And a kid in an emotional moment, you know, you can cut him a little bit. Like you said, first emotional moment. See, the first time, you know, the coach. Yes. If I was the coach, or Bear Bryant was there. Oh my God. <laughs> and you see that you call time, the game's over. Yeah. You just like, let their call, you call timeout and you get him off the field. Yes. And you push someone in. They tried to substitute and he wouldn't get off the field. And so the guy had to substitute, had to go back to the bench. That's a bad You call look. timeout and grab him and take him off the field. Then you let the other kid play. Sure. I mean, you can't, you cannot allow that because that, see, that really infects the team. Sure. Oh, no question. The younger kids, especially on the team, are looking no at the old Here's the All-American boy. Look, at is that the way you're supposed to act? You know, what, what are we doing? Mm-hmm. No, you, that's not how you act. So, we'll we'll turn to since we're recording this at CT State Norwalk. We thank our friends for uh, having us in once again. And what a wonderful facility! And it's what great. Great people here. They really are very nice. I Absolutely, they've been very accommodating to us. The equipment is great to work with, and. Uh, it's fun, fun to come here, so hopefully we do this for a long time. But since we are in the Metro New York area, we'll, we'll do our hockey segment now because the New York Rangers won last night, and that's all Terry has to say about that. Yeah, I was going to say, I'll just take a break now, and you can continue on hockey. No, that's it. I didn't even get to watch the game last night. Gr- great sport, but I know nothing about it. <laughs> but I will turn to baseball because... I know a lot about baseball. New York, baseball. New York, at and look, we love football in New York. I think, and maybe you'll disagree, but I think New York tends to be a baseball town when when everything is firing in all cylinders, and the Yankees and Mets are both firing pretty well, especially the Mets right now. The Mets look like the '69 Mets. I mean, they are winning. They are come from behind. Victories are incredible this year. They're never done. And they're doing it against Philly now, and they did you know, knock Philly out of the, out of the yeah the race. And it was just, you know, I looked at, I was out to dinner last night and I looked up and it was one nothing. Mets are losing. Six inning. I'm going, wow, you know, good, good pitching duel. Yep. 
Then I finish dinner walking out and I'll go past the uh, TV and there's 4-1 Mets. I'm going, whoa, what happened here? Same. Uh, same thing and happened to me. it's crazy. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm happy for him. I was never a Met fan because, you know, from Pittsburgh, we're, at that time, we're in the same division. Yeah. And, uh, but you know, they're doing well. And I, you know, my second team is the Yankees and I love the Yankees. And, uh, they're sort of that mystery team. They are. You know, usually they're the, the Bronx bombers, but you know, Bronx occasional bomb now. Bronx a, once in a, a while. An occasional pitch now. You know, the, the pitching staff, sometimes the bullpen looks great. Sometimes the starting pitcher looks great. You know, it's, they just, it's hard to put together. And, you know, last year I gave everybody a pass because they had a lot of injuries. Yes, they did. This year, you know, they've been pretty healthy. And Judge has had a phenomenal, phenomenal year. And, uh, and, but in the postseason, there's some guys that just don't hit in the postseason. And right now, Willie, look, Willie Mays, who the World Series MVP is the Willie Mays trophy, which is all due respect to Willie, ridiculous. Willie was not a good postseason player, and right now, neither is Aaron Judge. No, he's not. And something, you know, baseball's streaky. Yes, Teams and very, players. Very. So sometimes, you know, he's, he's care, put it this way, the Yankees wouldn't be in the playoffs without Judge. Yep. So he got him here. So is he not performing like he did in the past? Maybe this is his time to streak, to go into that bad streak. So I feel bad for him because he seems like a heck of a guy. Oh, I think he is. I think he's everything you want to root for in a baseball player. Yes. And I would love to see him bust out of this, but, uh, come on guys. I got you here. I'm, I'm having some problems. Yep. Carry me for a while. I carried you for 162 games. And by the way, and, and because people get on me because I'm, I'm pretty tough on Met fans because I think it's a difficult fan base. That's, I'll go no <laughs> further. I love Dave. Th- Dave helps me support the Mets because he's a good Met fan. Yes. He's a very good, good, he's a good, he's a good sports fan. Very good sports fan. Dave is very rational. But, uh, Francisco Lindor also is everything that's good about baseball. Guy plays hard, family man, great with the fan base, great with the media, and is clutch right now. That grand slam last night electrified City Field, can, one of the biggest hits in team history. Can you? I missed it, obviously, but uh, can you imagine what that place was like when he hit it? I didn't see it, but it had to be absolutely bizarre. Yeah, I saw some of the video. It, You're hoping for a it hit. It was nuts. Just a hit. Yeah. Get, you know, start, keep the rally going. Yeah. Then all of a sudden he ends the rally with that home run and go, whoa. Ended the series effectively, yeah. you know, because the, the Phillies kind of folded up after that. So Phillies got some stuff they need to work on. But if we're going to talk so much about the Mets and how remarkable their run is, as I told you before we started, the Detroit Tigers are working on one of the great stories maybe ever. Now you got to win a championship for it to yeah, be you gotta that keep great. Going. You got to keep going. But, a team that was effectively dead in August gets on a hot streak, gets to the wild card, wins the wild card, and now they're up two games to one on Cleveland with a chance to go to the American League Championship Series and play either the Yankees or Royals. Well, they know Cleveland because they play them a lot. No, sure. So that's probably to their benefit because they know the team. So, But uh, now you got to give them all the credit in the world. I mean, to get this far with, you know, just a whim. Yeah, we talk so much about Miracle Mets, things like that, 69, I get it. But if the Tigers do this same thing, you better come up with a nice, cute name for the Tigers because they'll be that same team. Yeah. It, it's a it's a pretty great story. They traded their best starting pitcher during the summer, traded them to the Dodgers, and the Dodgers get a win last night as well. Again, recording on Thursday, so you're looking back at Wednesday night. But uh, that Dodger Padre series now tied at two. They've got a game five coming up. Yankees can clinch against the Royals. That game tonight, and they got uh, uh, Cole going tonight. Yeah, and you know he hasn't been. I don't know what coming back. He to, wasn't great. He no, wasn't great he, in game he's one. He's grooving a lot of those pitches. Yeah, and you know he's a former Pirate. Yeah. Oh There's yeah. A lot, of, a lot of former Pirates out there. Yes, there are. Sadly, and, uh, don't don't let me get me into that one. Oh, but, uh, I'd love to see you get going on Bob Nutting, the 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 uh, uh, owner of Nutting. The, I mean, I, I cannot. Well, he's collecting a lot of money. Yeah, I he's mean, not the, collecting Nutting, that's for sure. I, I'll tell you, the Mets, the Yankees, mm-hmm. the Red Sox, the Dodgers are all giving Nutting money because they go over the salary cap. Yeah, it's bad. And you got to pay the the guys on the bottom of the run. He's collecting fifty million dollars a year. Yeah, I mean that that team should be taken away because it's a good baseball town. If you win. Oh, it's a very I good mean, baseball town. I mean, I'm glad Steelers you said like, that. Steelers like winners. Or Pittsburgh likes winners. 
and uh, you know you, you put some wins out there. And we've got we've had so many really great pitchers. You know, we got now with with Skeen. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody's the joke is now he's going to look great in pinstripes in <laughs> three or four years, <laughs> and uh, that's probably what's going to happen because they're not going to be able to afford, pay him that three hundred million dollars that uh, he's going to demand. It's a shame. It, it really is. Pittsburgh is a great, great sports town. And maybe this is the right podcast to say that on. I don't know, but it's a great sports town. Yeah, it really town. is. And they have the best baseball stadium going. I mean, yeah, everybody, pretty much. Everybody that goes pretty there. Close. Everybody goes there, tells me. Even guys from New York who are cynical and, um, you know, yeah. protective of my hometown. And, uh, it's, you know, that they built it right. They didn't build a big colossal 50, 60,000. You don't need that for baseball. Right. You need that 35,000 seat stadium where everybody is going to, you know, get a good seat and, and want to go to the games. And, you know, they're drawing, Skeen is drawing 10,000 seats more. Oh, sure. Every time he pitches. Sure. Wow. I mean, if I lived out near Pittsburgh, I'd want to go just to see him pitch. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Absolutely. Why wouldn't you? Um, before we turn this into a supersized edition again, like we did last week, which was great, hey, fun. The, the viewers are getting, a, or the listeners are getting a bang for their buck. We get on a roll. That's that's a beautiful thing. Anything else uh, you want to hit on before we wrap this one up? No, we're good. I think we're good for the week. We are good for the week, and it'll be a good week. College, NFL, all of that. Terry's going to go watch some hockey. The NBA yeah. is getting ready to start. No, but it, it is a great, oh, busy a great time of year. Hockey, but I just don't, I never grew up with it. Right. And, but, but it's just, it's arguably the best sports time of the year. Well, Everything's I going agree. on. Everything is happening right now. So enjoy. Even, sports. you know what? Let's do, let's do a second on this very quickly. Even the WNBA is getting ready to wrap up. Yeah. They're getting close to a championship. Can everybody pump the brakes on the drama in the WNBA? Just, it's good basketball. It's good basketball. These are the best players in the world. Yeah. Let let it happen. You've I've, got a generational talent in Caitlin Clark who is generating money for everyone. She's making them a fortune. Yes. And these these people cannot understand that. If it hadn't been for her, they wouldn't sign these big contracts. You're bringing eyeballs bring to the sport. a lot in there. And these these women have are great basketball players. They're fun to watch. You know, people tune in the game. Yep. Yep. I mean, it's really, you know, I really got into, you know, living in Connecticut. Mm-hmm. I got into women's basketball was because of uh, Gina Oriyama up here at UConn. Sure. And I still say that Diana Taurasi is the greatest woman basketball player ever. And I think she's the only person that might be able to play in the NBA. Only female. She'd have a shot. Yeah. She's, she's that good. But, you know, then Notre Dame became really good. So then, you know, then it's sort of snowball and Pat. Summit down to Tennessee and, you know. Oh, one of my the, favorite the, coaches the, ever, Pat the great, Summit. The great rivalries that started. The, yes. You know, because women's basketball used to be about six or eight teams. Yeah. That were chance of beating. The, the, the top three beat everybody. But then you had another five that were competitive. Yeah, it was kind of. Now it's all over. I mean, it's kind really of UConn, spreading. NC State, Tennessee. That's kind of what it was. That's at one what point. it was yeah. then. Yeah. But now it's everywhere. And yeah. you have really good, these, Ladies play great basketball. Watch them sometime. And em- it's fun. And embrace it because y- you have now you have a, a, a female assistant hockey coach in in the NHL. That's a great thing. We're seeing more, just more moving in the right direction. It, it's it's fun. Enjoy it. Yeah, take it all in. Just enjoy and enjoy this podcast every week because we'll do it again. We'll be back next week. Hopefully right back here, but we'll work on that. All right, that'll do it for this edition of Hanratty's Huddle. We thank you for joining us. Dave Taromio will be back with us. He's he's still off on assignment making the good money. <laughs> for Terry Hanratty, I'm Rob Adams. Have a great day. We'll talk to you next time.